The original Spyro is undisputedly the most difficult of the three original games for the PlayStation 1. This was through a combination of fiddly controls, unforgiving enemies and, perhaps most importantly, unintuitive level design. If we're looking at it from purely a combat challenge, the winner has to be Misty Bog. You have to fight against fireproof Norks, which aren't too much of a challenge, you simply headbutt them. Then there are boars that you can't headbutt, though you can flame. And then you have terrifying trees that do this, followed by this. These are a test of your reflexes, but once again, you can defeat by flaming at the right time. And then there are attack frogs that you can flame or charge, but who have a long-range weapon that will get you occasionally regardless of which approach you use. The level pits you up against a combination of these different enemies at the same time and in large quantities. And to make things more difficult, there are very few health-giving chicken on this level as well, and those that are happen to be guarded by an enemy that you have to defeat, who typically requires charging, and who inconveniently stands just in front of deadly goo that you can fall in and die. But practice makes perfect, and even if it costs you a few lives, you'll eventually end up beating this level through sheer attrition. I'm going to go through the three parts of the game that can't be beaten through skill, but rather through trial and error, and a lot of rage-induced controller chucking. Third on this list is Jacques, or as I used to call it, Jack Cues. This is kind of a boss level of sorts, only he sucks massively. However, once you've defeated him and have inevitably tried and failed to escape from the level from this position, you'll soon find that you can't complete this level. You'll find this dragon just out of reach since this pillar is too high to jump on. You'll go back to the end of the level again to try and jump out, again, and you'll fail, again. And then you'll give up and look online for an answer. But back then, 10-year-old Philip didn't have this option. Somehow he found a solution that 20-something me couldn't be bothered to. This level is fairly late on in the game and they were starting to run out of ideas for the monsters. In this level, for example, there are supposedly female monsters affectionately holding flowers, which I find strangely endearing. Just thought I'd mention that. It has nothing to do with this video, but I remember thinking it back then and I still feel this way now. So useless monsters with flowers? You'll forever have a place on Two Clicks Philip. But the level is also full of fools, who are enemies that don't die, but rather turn into a clock that will change the level in some way for a limited amount of time. Most just activate a nearby platform, but there's one who seemingly does nothing. You'll likely flame him and think, hmm, that's strange, he doesn't do anything. But then you'll carry on your way thinking that you were so awesome you managed to get past that bit without even needing him. But no. This one fool lowers the platform somewhere else in the level and you've got to quickly do this to get on it. Unintuitive? Yes. But easy once you know how. You'll then be able to explore a very interesting part of the level, hidden down a deep and narrow canyon beyond the rest of it. Next I've chosen Treetops, an infamous level remembered by all who suffered it. Everything about this map screams unintuitive. It's freaking massive. A large tree here, distant platforms there, and boost ramps everywhere. You can't beat it with logical thinking. Every boost ramp is a painful case of trial and error to master, and sometimes they'll fail through no fault of your own. And the developers knew how poopy this level was too. By this stage in the game, most dragons rescued spout generic thanks or a joke of some kind. Yet the ones you rescue in this level are crammed full of advice on how to complete the ludicrous challenges of this level. Just getting to the end of it is an achievement. The na 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 enemies are harder still as you engage in difficult multiple ramp chases to the far corners of the map. And yet, none let you get to this far off platform, which is out of the way even for the treetops level. You can see it, but nothing seems to get you there. You leap from boost ramp to boost ramp and yet you either end up in a dead end or plummet into your death far below. That's because you're thinking far too rationally. The correct solution is, down the obvious one, through this area to the next obvious one, then back up the next one the wrong way, and then a botched glitchy jump onto the fourth that you'd never expect you'd have to make. And there you have it. You can now execute that final egg thief and leave the level behind, until you unexpectedly have to replay it for a YouTube video in about a decade's time and somehow find it even harder than you did this time. And what's more, this level is about midway through the game. It stands out as being far harder than anything else around it. Gnasty Gnock would have stood a better chance if he were to hang around these branches for the whole game. I know that for most of you who completed Spyro 1, Treetops will be the one that you remember, but at least you knew where you were trying to get to, and it's incredible how patient a child can be if you dangle a treat in front of them, just out of reach of their futile, floppy attempts. But there's one that I feel is even less logical than the one in Treetops, and that's Haunted Towers. Much like Jack Q's, it's a level from the final homeworld, so I guess the developers assume that the players must like the game enough to be challenged at this point. Most of it's easy. 
This level's fad is indestructible knights. You have to be kissed by a fairy to be able to destroy them, and even with limited time with this ability, it's very easy to beat. The average player will reach the end of this level with little difficulty, though I made it impossible for myself in the latest playthrough when an enemy dropped his gem off the side of the map. But there's a nasty little twist. You'll beat this level, and your heart will drop when you realise that the large chunk of it hasn't been explored and is nowhere in sight. You know what hint they gave poor 10-year-old Philip? This, in part of a skippable cutscene. Look, there's a hole in the ceiling. What could be up there? And more importantly, how the hell do you get there? You'll notice a ramp outside, which must be something to do with the run boost earlier on in the level. Great, let's try that. Nope, it's impossible to get all the way around it. It's just too tight. Oh look, there's the gem I lost earlier. So what are you meant to do? This. Totally unintuitive. At least with treetops you could see where you had to get to, even if the path was like something out of Crystal Maze. But this? From the rest of the level, this outside platform doesn't look important, as if it's part of the many castle rooms you explore later on. There isn't even a dragon or gems here to indicate otherwise, and the ramp is a pointless diversion. In a kid's game? What were they thinking? Even when expecting it in my most recent playthrough, the puzzle's presentation threw me off and I had to consult a guide. Insomniac Games must have expected 10 year olds everywhere to hurl Spyro to his death over and over again to find this sort of stuff. They're monsters. And yet, it worked. I, and likely a handful of other 10 year olds around the world, did manage to find it and complete the game. But most probably couldn't and had their childhood marred by a sub 100% complete score on this level, preventing them from completing Spyro. They learned their lesson and made the second and third games far easier, fairer, and more intuitive. But is this necessarily better? In our adult life, when we look back nostalgically at our childhood games, which will we remember? Enjoying ourselves on the fun but fair levels of Spyro 3? Or falling to our dooms over and over again, tears streaming down our faces at the painful sight of our hard-earned lives dropping away with every failed attempt on the dastardly treetops level from the original Spyro? I know which one I remember.